Durham region. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Little Bit Fit with me, Karen Ross. I giggle every time I say that. Anyway, all right, so uh, today you are going to need your water, as always. You're going to need a chair times two, okay? So two chairs today, and you're going to need your weights or soup cans or nothing at all. Remember, um, when it comes to the weights part, you don't have to use anything. You can just use the weight of your own arms. But before we get to the good stuff, we're going to talk about our fit tip today. And our fit tip is use it or lose it. We've all heard that saying, but what exactly does it mean? Well, the human body is built to do really amazing things. Um, and when we're young, and especially when we're children, um, we do things without even thinking about it. We're moving in all different directions. And our body is able to push and pull and sidestep and go forward, backwards, diagonal. But as we get older, we stop doing those movement patterns. So it becomes more difficult the older we become and the less we use our body the way it's meant to be used, the more likely it is we're going to uh, lose those uh, movement patterns. So we have to rebuild the movement patterns. And how do we do that? We do that by moving in all those weird directions. So practice walking backwards, be safe about it, walk on the diagonal, um, and move your body in all the ways that you used to before you stopped doing that. Think of children at play. Think of children at play. So grab your stuff. That's our fit tip for the day. So grab your stuff, and I will meet you right here in two seconds. Here we go. Start with that move. Do, do whatever you want. Just move. Get your body moving. Move your arms. I've got some toe taps happening right now. And I'm swaying side to side. I'm just warming up. It really doesn't matter what you do to warm up. As long as you warm up your muscles in your joints before we get into a little bit more intense cardio. Whatever you want to do. If you want to get out of your chair and dance, by all means, go for it. Nobody says you have to stay sitting down. Finger snapping is encouraged. Still warming up. All right, we're going to start with that heel tap, 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 just to get our legs moving a little bit more. Nice, easy heel tap. Sit up nice and tall or stand up nice and tall. If you're standing up, doing your heel taps, whatever you like, just make sure you're standing up nice and tall and remind your body to breathe. I'm going to reach up. Up, 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 or one arm. Whatever you like, lots of different combinations. As long as you're moving, that's what matters. You push to the front, or reach it up, or none of the above. Whatever you like. We're just trying to get our heart rate up. Increase our breathing. Oh, he's picking up the tempo on us now. Here we go. Fronts. 
side one two three front side one two three front side one two three whatever you want to do with your arms front side one two three one two three front side one two three keep it going a little bit of drums breathe whatever you want to do with the farms one two three front side one two three breathe Back to those quick heel taps. Out to the side. Tap to the front. Four to the front, four to the side. One, two, three, back to the front. Out to the side. Front. Side. Front. Side. Front. Side. Stay to the side. One, two, three, four. Switch. One, two, three, four. Switch. 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 Whatever you want to do with those arms. Switch. 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 How about two and two? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two. Back to four. One, two, three, four. Switch. 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 Two and two. One, two. One, two. One, two. That's it. Push front, alternating. Out to the side for eight, alternating. Four more. Push to the front for eight. Four more. Out to the side for eight. Four more. Front side, one, two, three. Front side, cha-cha-cha. Remember, get out of your chair anytime you choose. Breathe. Keep going. Two. We're going to start slowing it down. March it out. Shift back in your chair just a little bit. We're gonna walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it in. Walk it out. Walk it in. Walk it out. Walk it in. One more time. Woo! 
go back to that easy sway. Let's bring our heart rate all the way down or almost all the way down. Catch our breath before we move on to our strength training. So grab some water, grab some water, have a sip of water and I'll see you right back here in two seconds for our strength training. Okay, so it's time to get our strength training done. It doesn't have to be complicated and you don't need a lot of equipment. And the first one on our list today is a push up. Don't panic. Don't panic. Um, I don't do push ups down on the floor anymore. I do them on the edge of my counter or the edge of my dining room table, which is up against a wall. I don't do push ups down on the floor anymore. My wrists don't like it. My shoulders don't like it. So I've had to modify permanently. But I'm going to show you how to do a very, very, very beginner push up. So I'm going to come out of my chair. I'm going to move my chair a little bit. I'm going to show you on the wall. I'm going to turn my back to you but you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna walk into my wall. My hands are shoulder height, my mic pack there. So I'm gonna put my hands on the wall and my, my hands are shoulder width apart. So I'm here and I'm just gonna walk back a little bit. And now I'm gonna bend my elbows nice and simple and my forehead is heading toward my wall. I'm keeping my back nice and straight keeping my neck aligned with the rest of my spine. I'm gonna do one more on the wall. And that's how you do a wall push up. So don't let anybody tell you, including yourself, that you cannot do a push up because yes, you can. Another way to do a push up is seated using your upper body uh, weight to push away from your lap. So you're going to put the heels of your hands above your kneecaps. You're going to open your feet a little bit because you want to have somewhere. I don't know about you, but I have a belly. Um, I want to have somewhere to drop my belly. And you know what? It doesn't matter how much fluff you have. It depends on what's under that fluff. That really, really matters. My muscles are very strong under my fluff. So I'm okay with that. That's what's important to me. So I'm going to drop my body down. I'm looking at the floor. Now I'm, and my elbows are bent. And now I'm going to straighten my arms, pushing my weight into the heels of my hands, above my kneecaps, into my thighs. So this is the easy part. Keep your spine nice and straight. And then push, push away from your lap. So bend your elbows. Make sure you're bending your elbows. And then straighten your elbows as you push your body weight away from your lap. Breathe, use your arm muscles to move your upper body. Don't let your upper body muscles do any of the work here. I'm gonna do one more. And push away. So that is how you do push-ups when you don't do them on the floor anymore. Um, Progressive, progressive work. You start with however many you can do until you can't do any more. Sometimes the wrists start to go if you're on the wall before. Shake them out and then do a few more. But always make sure that when you walk into that wall, your hands are below your shoulders, but your hands are shoulder width apart. You don't want your hands to be up here, nor do you want them to be way down here. You want them to be just below your shoulders. And then if this is my spine, I'm keeping my spine nice and straight. I don't want my hips to go toward the wall, nor do I want the top of my head to go toward the wall. It's my forehead that heads toward that wall. So those are your push-ups. Practice, practice, practice. And email me. Email me and let me know how it's going. View a response. Use that tab. So now we're going to go to heel toe walkouts. You're going to feel your, your shins all around. So we're going to start. Come to the edge of your chair. Make sure you can see your toes. You're going to move your heels. So you're going to out, out, out. So you go heels and toes out as wide as you can go. And then you walk them back in. These are getting those muscles around those ankles keeping those ankles strong, and it's also getting your shins 
it's called the soleus, your shin muscles, your calf muscles, and up into your knees, inner and outer thighs. So you're working all the way up into the hips, but we really want to focus on those ankles. So walking it out, walking it back in and make sure you pick up those heels and toes. Don't just Elvis it out and in. Pick up the heels, pick up the toes, pick up the heels, pick up the toes. And the more you pick them up, the more you're going to feel the muscles that we need to be working. So out and in. One more time. Always sitting up nice and tall and bringing it back in. There we go. So give that a little shake. Nicely done. I'm gonna take one weight, one weight to start and I will show you how to do two, but we're just gonna start with one. So we're going to do a modified deadlift. deadlift. You wanna keep your spine straight. You're just gonna hinge, your arms don't do anything. Unlike our push up. Our arms are just going to hold that weight. Now I'm going to use my lower back muscles to bring my torso back up tall. Hinge forward from your hips. And then use your lower back muscles to pull that up. If you want to use more weight, you can use more weight. Hang on to them like so. Bring it down and then use those lower back muscles to bring yourself back upright. So down you go, keeping your spine straight, using your lower back muscles to bring your torso back up to tall. I'm gonna do a couple more. Breathe one more. And up we go. I'm going to heel toe my way in. And I keep these because the next exercise we do, we're going to need these or maybe not. Depends on you. Remember, you can lift your arms without having weights in them. So I'm going to shift back on my chair a little bit. Bring my feet forward so I can see my toes. We're going to do an alternating lat lift with knees. So we pick it up and put it back down. Other side, lift it and put it back down. We're going to do one more on each side. Lift it and put it down. Lift it and put it down and shake that out. Notice how I didn't lift a Above my shoulders, that's really important. So keep shaking it out, grab a sip of water, and I will see you right back here. And you know how many, two, two seconds for our stretch. Okay, everybody, the hard work is done, but we need to stretch it out. Stretching is so, so important to maintain range of motion through the joints and to eliminate as much pain as possible from your muscle tissue. So let's get it started. The first one we're gonna do is a forward fold. So we're gonna widen our feet. This is gonna release the mid and the lower back. So open your feet again. Give your torso somewhere to go. You know, drop your torso in between your knees. If you have vertigo, go as far as you can without triggering that, okay? Be aware of your stuff. So we're gonna make a round back. We're gonna make that cat back toward the back of our chair. And then we're gonna bring our forearms to just above our kneecaps. And we're gonna stay right here and we're gonna breathe. Breathe. This is as far as you can go without triggering vertigo. Just focus on that round cat back. My hands are gonna to come to my thighs. I'm going to wiggle my torso in between my knees as I slide down. So my hands are down around my ankles now. If you need to glance up to see what I'm up to, by all means, but then look back down at the floor. You wanna keep the back of your neck open. 
you're starting to feel that release through the mid and the lower back. I'm going to let go completely. My fingers are nowhere near the floor right here. That tells me that my mid and my lower back are very tight. The longer I stay here, the more it stretches out and the more my fingers move toward the floor. And I'm looking under my chair. Breathe. There, my fingers are on the floor now. Never force it. Never force a stretch. Bring your hands back to around your ankles and stay right there. Bring your forearms to your thighs without lifting your torso. Just bring your arms to your thighs. Still looking down at the floor. We're gonna take a big breath in as we lift our torso. Here we go. Big breath in in three, two, one. Stay here. I'm still looking at the floor, but I've lifted my head above my heart. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm still releasing my lower back muscles. Breathe. Moving into that round spine again, so I'm making that cat back toward the back of my chair. And then I'm coming back up to a tall spine. Never rush a stretch. You saw how many steps were in that stretch. So always moving in and out of stretches mindfully because we do not want to feel pain when we are stretching. All right, we're gonna move over to the side of our chair. We're gonna do the inside of our leg. Hang on, landmark it if you want to, bring your leg out under your armpit. If that's too intense, bring it forward on that 45 degree angle. And we're just gonna stay right here. We wanna release this. Try to get your toes to point forward and push this foot flat on the floor. Breathe. Sitting up nice and tall. We don't want to let our body cheat and lean one or the other. Sitting up nice and tall. Hang on to the side of your chair. We're going to wiggle walk because sometimes when we do this, our knee locks out. So you're going to move your heel first. Move your heel, move your toes, and then slowly bend that knee come over to the other side of the chair and again always being mindful moving in and out of stretches <laughs> so I'm gonna have to move this moving in and out of stretches sitting up nice and tall and always do a visual check always do a visual check because sometimes what you think is happening with your body what your brain thinks is happening isn't what's happening at all always make sure that you do a visual check to make sure that this is getting to the body parts you're wanting to work with. Sitting up nice and tall, letting the inside of this leg open and stretch. Breathe. That's it. Remember, you need to hold a stretch for at least 20 to 30 seconds for it to be effective. Ready to wiggle, walk it back in. Move your heel first. Heel, toe, that's it. Hang on to the side of your chair and bring it all the way back in. This is where you're gonna need your other chair. We're gonna get into that figure four. Lean back, cross it over. Please use the modification. Even if you're familiar with regular figure four, please use the modification and sit up nice and tall. Breathe. You're gonna feel a release start in the outside of your hip. If you choose to go into the final part of figure four, by all means, if this is enough for you, stay here. I'm gonna make sure that my shoulders stay behind my body and I'm gonna move my chest toward my crossed over leg. And I'm gonna look down at the floor. Breathe. 
please don't ever take a stretch to pain. Breathe. And come back up to tall, all the way back. Let's do the other side. Sit up tall, this knee is very high, meaning this, this hip is very tight today. Just gonna stay here and breathe. And then move forward. Breathe. And then come up to tall. Our final one, we're gonna come out of our chair. I've pulled this from yoga. This is a down dog with a chair. So you're gonna come with your chair behind and you're just gonna walk backwards a little bit. You're gonna push your weight into your heels and then you're gonna look down at the floor. Try to bring your head in between your arms. Don't push it. Don't force it. Bend your knees and up we come. So we are done. I will meet you back up there in two seconds for our recap. Well, there we have it. Another day of hard work done. Nicely done. Be proud of yourself. Remember, celebrate those small victories. So we're going to recap. We're going to recap. Um, but time for a change. So I decided to shave it off and start all over again. So anyway, you're probably wondering what I did with my hair. It's on a floor somewhere. Anyway, change is good. Change is good. That's to make a point. Change is good. Um, so to recap our fit tip, use it or lose it. Keep moving your body the way it was meant to move. Because if you don't, and you probably know that already, it's going to not move effectively anymore. Um, I'm not saying go turn cartwheels or anything. Well, you can if you want to, um, but start remembering how you used to move when you were younger and try to practice a little bit of that every day. Walk backwards, walk backwards, walk down your hall with your hands on your walls, walking backwards or get someone in your family to hold your hands and walk backwards. Sidestep, grapevine, all of those things um, that your hips have long forgotten how to do things like that. So if you don't want it to shut down, you need to keep using it. So move, relearn movement patterns, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Baby steps add up. Remember that. So thank you again from the whole crew at Rogers TV. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. But remember, knowledge is power, and the more you know, the more you can grow. We will see you next time. response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. It was my daughter's birthday. She was blowing out the candles on her cake when we heard coming from the TV. So we stopped and listened and it helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of my daughter's birthday because now she gets to keep having them.